Howdy, howdy, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Nerd Hell. It's me, Robinson, and recently my entire worldview has been shattered by a DNA test. And it's me, Stanley. I'm just a normal, everyday person until I'm not. Ooh, you know, and he is. Like those, <laughs> like those uh, documentaries where, like, they're, they had such a perfect life, and then it flashes to, like, negative photo. Until they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, what's that TLC show where you like, it, it's like an unconventional love, like that one guy who's like, Hi, my name's Gary. I, I like dogs. I like walks on the beach. I'm a mechanic. And I'm in oh. a serious relationship with my car. <laughs> you mean like or My Strange Addiction? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Or, yeah, that video came out like so fucking long ago. I it love it so much. <laughs> and I'm in a serious relationship with my car. And then the music mm. changes to creepy banjo. But, Damn. uh, yeah. And I, uh, it's something like dun 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 dun. The dueling banjos kind of soundtrack. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I always ever wondered, like, you know. What what does that mean when they're like, and I'm in I'm in a romantic relationship with my car, and I'm like, okay, what does that mean like for you? Like just you sit inside of it? Like what's going on here? <laughs> and sometimes she sits inside of me. That's uh that's gonna be quite difficult to do. No worry. Considering the <laughs> the geographic proportions of you know your body versus theirs. So don't worry, you know. it's a stick shift. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gotta turn that knob. So, put it into park. We had a regular show today. We were gonna do some fucking like normal shit, but something happened, Robinson. Something dangerous. Something so disgusting and vile that we have to like basically abandon all our other fu fucking shit that we we're gonna talk about, and we had to talk about this one because it's such. A massive development in in the world stage. Yeah, you know? it's it's. Yeah. I think in my in my living life, this is the second piece of world history that I lived through. The first one was the pandemic, and now, the I just so real quick for everybody out there. This is just a way for us to try to support um the, try to support the Ukrainian country. Because it's not like we can fly over there, drop out, and start fighting. And there's a lot of ways to get the word out. You can help how you can. They have multiple donations up. We're all in this together, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Slava Ukraina, which is like, you know, long live Ukraine, I guess. But still, um, I my Russian teacher at, at Baylor University was, is, was slash is Ukrainian. And she's the one that taught me Russian. So like, I guess I have more loyalty underneath all that shit than I do to Russia, than I do to, or like, to Ukraine than I do, like, Russia. So, and Russia and Ukrainian are very similar as far as, like, any other, like, linguistic language goes. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, dude. I am, I'm actually quite amazed because I had this take that, Putin wasn't going to fucking do shit. He wasn't going to fucking do shit, right? There's no reason why he would be able to do this because think about the other times that Russia has threatened to invade other countries in 2008 or 2006 or some kind of shit like that when they invaded Georgia and then um, 2012 and 2013 when they took over the Crimea those were, like, really big major events, but he kind of stopped, right? He didn't invade the other, like, he threatened, but he didn't invade the other, like, whole countries. And so now I'm just kind of like, damn, this is abnormal. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Did Putin get, like, a fucking um, cancer diagnosis? What, like, a what? terminal cancer diagnosis? And he's like, you know what, fuck it. If I'm going to die, everyone's going to go with me. You know what? It wouldn't shock me. But um, it's just wild that... I don't know. I had like I had like a whole life-changing revelation when this broke out. Like especially today because you know what I did today? I woke up, I went to the gym, I went to Costco, I came back. Um I'm doing a podcast and there are people my age and younger actively fighting for their lives right now, like at this very moment. Yeah. It's just No, we would we would have if we were fuck? both in that situation, we would both be um, drafted 
Like, is it, it's, exactly. it's essentially like anyone between the ages of 18 and 60 are were supposed to be part of the vol- the volunteer militia. So, you know, shit, dude. Like, that's that's some fucking kind of thing. Like, you're getting saddled up with an AK-74 because there's a, a bunch of people uh, that are Ukrainian who are showing pictures of the guns that were given to them by the government. And they're all like brand spanking new AK-74s and AK-10s um, and that kind of shit. And I'm just like, God damn, those are beautiful guns. And if I were ever to go into a fucking serious survival fight, those would be the guns that I fucking choose over the M10. Because fuck American-made carbine guns. And I know <laughs> any weeb that's any weeb that has a has a love for danger dildos, which is what Hassan Piker calls fucking um, you know guns. I AK-47, AK-74, fucking all the way. Jesus Christ! Like those guns have a reputation for a reason, and. Yeah, I can't, I can't fathom. Like it's one of those things of this is the world. This is the largest invasion that Europe has seen since fucking World War II, right? Mm-hmm. And that was over like eighty years ago. So there have been people who have died who were born at the end of the uh, the end of the fall of Berlin, all the way to fucking uh, a couple of weeks ago who died in their fucking eighties before any of this shit fucking happened so Mm -hmm. it's it's so weird to me to see this fucking happen what's super crazy about it is that everybody knows because if you i don't know if you've been online like recently on like reddit or anything like that but there are ukrainian everybody has cell phones right yeah so you know everybody knows what's going on right now and what mm-hmm. I do appreciate is there are people my age just being shitlords about it, <laughs> which, honestly, good for them. Good for them for keeping a sense of humor during these really, really tough times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's... it's just, but humor is one of the ways that people, uh, like, cope, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a, a French scientist who was watching the uh, guillotine right way back in like the French Revolution. And you notice that there were people who, when the heads would come off from the guillotine, they started giggling. And so he was like, what the fuck is this bullshit? And realized that, you know, what is it? It's a, it's a nervous system reaction to uh, extreme horror or tragedy. And so they call it so lovingly guillotine laughter. I mean, so, I yeah. get that. I laugh when I'm nervous, or I laugh when something dangerous is happening, which is bad because somebody always goes, "What's so funny?" And I'm like, "I'm nervous." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, it appears charming or threatening. Who fuck knows, right? Mm. But still, so okay, we gotta talk about what is happening, right? So obviously. I, I'm pretty sure that you kind of understand, like, how the situation went, right? But Russia's been building up a bunch of troops on the Ukrainian border since, what, like, January, Christmas, or something like that? Like, it's been basically a steady buildup all throughout. And there were tons of people who were like, oh, this is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. And then um, tensions escalated to the point where... Putin made his move where he was saying that he's going to do what he needs to in order to protect Russian lives that are living inside of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions, which um, have been since like 2012, 2013, uh, pro-Russian rebel forces that are fighting against the Ukrainian government. And these are people who are morally and... Well, not morally, but they are financially and militarily supported by Russian, like, military intelligence. Mm -hmm. So, they got weapons, they got shit, they got a whole bunch of things ready for them. So, what is it? Last week, Putin decided to go ahead and unilaterally uh, recognize the sovereignty of the Donetsk and Luhansk um, independent republics. And so... That's, you know, basically two countries are now formed or have been carved out of Ukraine, right? Yeah. And no one else, no one else recognizes sovereignty. Not a single other person, not a single other country recognize their sovereignty. And so in order to prevent um, Ukraine from, like, 
kicking out the Russian pro Russia rebels, right? Uh, Putin, when his uh, step two, go ahead and increase this so called, uh, what is it, independence, right? This sovereignty, decided to sign a, another treaty with these independent republics by saying that they are going to be supported militarily directly. So, um, yeah, they uh, sent in tanks, the quote, peacekeeping people. And then Putin was just kind of like, okay, fuck it. I'm tired of pretending. Let's just fucking go in right now. So he just went in and they started shelling. And he says that um, it's, it's uh, there for demilitarization and denazification, claiming that, like, apparently these poor speaking Russians were suffering a genocide, <laughs> which Ugh. not true, right? At all. It was fucking not true. It's Russian state propaganda, uh, mainly to make themselves look good. But this is like some ballsy kind of fucking shit. And it's one of those things of like, you can expect Putin to kind of do some bullshit like this, but you don't expect him to fucking invade an entire country when every single person is watching and every single person is like, yo dude, don't fucking do it. Right. It's like a little kid with a fork and they look at an outlet going, I wonder if I can stick this in this outlet and they get closer. And we're like, don't do it. And then they're just like, jamming it into the fucking electrical outlet and then they're dying of electricity but we're like you know we told you not to do it and he's like look at what you're making me do mm -hmm. and um what's scary is you brought up propaganda and um i saw an example of like a cyber a cyber propaganda like i'm, I'm gonna call it a cyber attack uh mm -hmm. because what russia did uh posing as multiple like polish um not yeah, Polish um, and Ukrainian news sources and, like, Twitters, um, they were saying, the Poland border's closed, we have nowhere to go, when that is completely false, right? Yeah. So much so that the Polish, um, like, made multiple posts, multiple news sources, posters, everything saying, our borders are not closed, if you're a Ukrainian refugee, please flee to our country. Yeah. And that's even, scary. That, even that's... fucking Ireland is getting rid of any visa, travel visas. For Ukrainians wanting to, to go to Ireland, yeah. which I mean, fuck, it's, dude, like that's Ireland's super hard to get like amnesty for. So, yeah, and it's just know? so scary that that's a new war tactic that I don't think I've ever seen before. Like fake like they weaponized fake news. Like I know fake news is a meme over here in the States, but Russia found a way to use it to gain an advantage in a goddamn war. No, well, I think. One of the, the, the problem is that Russia has always used information and misinformation as a tactic for military assets. They even have an entire part of the GRU, which is the Russian intelligence, that is based on cyber warfare and misinformation. So this is not anything really new. It's just new, just new to you because yeah. you haven't seen it done in a way that is very blatant and very obvious, right? Because... Um, back in 2016, during the American pres presidential election, there were cyber attacks on the Republican National Committee and the Democratic National Committee for data that was spearheaded by the Kremlin and the GRU. So, you know, we have essentially uh, it, of course, like it was one of those things of like people were denying it and there was investigations and then people forgot about it. But then now that it's back, right? It's obviously very apparent that this can be fucking done. Um, the place that I live, right, is very close in proximity to a really important U.S. military whatever. And we just got an email from our school um, essentially saying, like, hey, guys, um, we're connected, right, Inter like with the Internet towards this military base. So be on the lookout for phishing scams or any kind of like attack like that. And I'm like, yo. They're trying to take over a fucking math teacher's account, right? Or an English teacher's <laughs> account so that they can go do uh, do misinformation on a U.S. military base. Like, yo, they must be getting fucking desperate if oh, that's going to be the 100%. Everybody is putting sanctions on Russia, except for China. But nobody's surprised about that. No, uh, but China did actually come out today and condemn um, Russia. Okay, Trust finally. me, there's not... 
historically speaking, there's not a lot of love between Russia and China. So, you know. All right, never mind. I take that back. But I, I just appreciate that almost every single country has put economic sanctions on um, Russia. And what happened recently with uh, SWIFT? Yeah, so there is this thing called SWIFT, right, which is the Society for Worldwide, Worldwide Internet, Interbank Finance Com Telecommunication. And it is a global banking system um, that helps international payments, that does uh, other things with financial institutions. It's like um, how – it's like the system in which we pay – uh, for trade, right? So yesterday or in the day before, there were three countries that had opposed putting Russia off of SWIFT. It was Italy, uh, Germany, Hungary, and they were essentially like, no, let's not do that, right? Because that's going to be like ruinous to us too, because the world is way more interconnected now than it was like even during World War II. So... Italy, Germany, and Hungary changed their minds really quickly when they saw, like, what was going on and decided that they're, like, okay with uh, kicking Russia out of SWIFT. So yeah, yeah, there is no hiding it anymore unless, like, you can't, you can't EMP an entire nation's internet connection. There is yeah. no hiding what's going on right now. Yeah, and the main concern right now um, with them kicking out swift right is that italy and germany are really kind of concerned that uh they won't have access to russian fuel to russian gas which is a valid concern right but germany has been moving along more green natural energy and russian gas is only about like 20 percent of their total consumption of like natural gas anyways so gas prices are going to go up but you know it's one of those things of like, what is it? Um, starve a cold or whatever that fucking saying starve is. Starve a cold, feed a fever? Yeah. So it's kind of like uh, we're, the, Russia is the cold in this in this scenario, right? Ah, I so, see what you mean, yeah. But still, the secure messaging service that's used to allow the communication between like more than 11,000 banks and other financial institutions are going to be cut off from Russia completely essentially making them like financially um not only unstable but financially just cut off from the rest of the world and that is that's one of those things of god damn this is real history in the making like this is one of those things that they did something so fucking um unpopular right that most countries are just like yeah okay let's just do this so we can't really agree on fucking anything, but it's so interesting to see how quickly um, this was kind of brought up and put as an option, right? Because we cannot really go into the Ukraine because I don't know if you've wondered um, why doesn't the U.S. actually or like NATO or anyone actually go in and like fucking help the Ukraine. And it's it's uh, there's. Long story, I'll go over, but short story is Russia's a nuclear power, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, and Putin has done crazy shit this week, right? Like the whole thing is that even people who followed Putin and Russia their entire careers were like, no, nah, I don't really think it's going to happen. Like maybe, maybe not. And then it happened and they're like, oh, shit. This guy's fucking insane. So, um, but he threatened to use nuclear weapons a couple of times. Mm -hmm. If any, if any person actually did it. So in the Ukraine was just essentially like, we don't really, we just need ammo. Just give us fucking ammo. Give us fucking uh, speaking, guns. Uh, speaking of ammo, <laughs> you brought up Germany earlier. And one thing yeah. I wanted to bring up about the gasoline is Volkswagen said by like 2030 they will be they'll only make electric cars, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So one cool on Germany for going into an all electric route. Two, Germany recently sent the Ukraine 400 RPGs. Yeah. Which is they're I also can't... sending 5,000 German-made helmets, right? Yeah, and those are the good I kind. Think... I know, and the I think I just saw, because, like, this is still a developing situation, right? Because 
It's not like we're talking about the, this invasion in the future when, like, everything's kind of settled. There's, like, now reports that Germany is now sending weapons, right? Yeah. Not just RPGs and that kind of, but actual German-made weapons, the good shit, right? Oh, and, God. And you can kind of get a little bit of the, the hesitation here when it comes to to that especially because Germans have uh, reconciled with the fact that World War II was only really 80 years ago, right? Or even, like, the ramifications for that. They've been lived through their entire life. And as someone who actually went to, like, school in Germany, there's, like, an entire month that they dedicate, like, you know, to the Holocaust remembrance, right? So it's it's brutal. It is one of those things that a lot of Germans themselves are very anti-war when it comes to, like, just everything it's except you got like a few weirdos but you got a few weirdos in every situation so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah but i mean i can get their hesitancy about wanting to send weapons because of like their whole past and that kind of stuff so you know i i really can't empathize with them but also they're doing the right thing by sending like support in some kind of way and uh you know still it's (sighs) This it's, is it's crazy. It's wild. Yeah, this it's is, insane. I I don't like I've been thinking about this and obsessing about this since it started happening on Wednesday night, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just like, yo, is this really happening? <laughs> is this really happening? And like this is such a such a weird stuff to do. Um, especially like when you look at uh Volodymyr Zelensky, right? Dude, Volodymyr Zelensky is such a <laughs> It's such a weird story, but also kind of inspiring too, right? Because um, America had a um, rough president recently, right? We've had a good old uh, orange Cheeto Jesus like kind of ruling us for a bit, and he's not a good president. But Vladimir Zelensky was actually a comedian who wrote and starred in a movie in which a history teacher, after talking about anti-corruption, got elected to become the president of Ukraine (laughs) and stood up to corruption in Russia. And there's one scene where, like, uh, from the movie where someone hands Zelensky, like, two Uzis, and then he just, like, opens fire on, like, in his dream or in his imagination on, like, the fucking uh, corrupt politicians all in the room. Uh, Cause like it's it's supposed to be like a dark comedy or whatever, but I mean, think about whatever politician has done that. When you're getting into politics and you're arguing politics, there are times where you're like in your mind, dude, I would I want to fucking kill, you. <laughs> like right. Mm-hmm. So it's a good movie actually. I watched it recently after all this shit started happening. Dude, he's actually genuinely genuinely funny, but Volodymyr Zelensky is now like dealing with this this shit and he's acting like such a giga chad he like rejected just asylum <laughs> he rejected I asylum yeah and his I, response was i don't need i don't need a ride i need ammo right yeah, so, I, I don't want to i don't want to make it into a meme but holy shit chaos magic is real look at this motherfucker <laughs> is the dark chaos magician like, i know shit. he he was a comedian that started in a movie about a, a person becoming president and then fucking became president. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, what, what? Yeah, no, you're right. Giga Chad status. And same thing with the former president, too. Like, those pictures of the former Ukrainian per, um, president in a goddamn flak jacket. Oh, uh, Kalinchko? Yeah. You know, the, the UFC fighter? <laughs> Yeah, he really? like I think it. Was, yeah, I think one of the God, one of the politicians the Ukraine, used to be a former U- UFC fighter. The Ukraines um, are fucking badass. What the hell? Yeah, well, man, I'm gonna fact check myself. <laughs> Go ahead. Vladimir Zelensky. Yeah, in the meantime, no. could you imagine that? There's this video where he's having coffee with his soldiers. Could you imagine you're a soldier, you're an 18 year old Ukrainian boy, right? Whole life mm. might end tonight. And then you turn to your left, and there's your president with a gun and a cup of coffee. Like, yeah, what? Um, what a fucking morale booster that your leader is right there beside you. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you're talking about uh, Petro Poroshenko. 
So, uh, no, that's not it. Uh, Clint Chaco, who was a mayor, uh, of a Russian or of a Ukrainian city used to be in the, used to be the fucking UFC. Still so pretty awesome. Um, yeah, still, um, God damn. Right. So can you, let me, I was, can you say that one more time? I was, I was not listening cause I was looking at this, this, um, <laughs> no worries. So, long story short. Um, have you seen that video where the president is having coffee with soldiers and he's like in the same gear they are? Mm-hmm. What a yeah. fucking morale booster that your president, your leader is not hiding in some fucking ivory tower that he's there with you in the fucking dirt. Yeah, like that. Yeah, I right? would never. Like, what was it? As an American, I would never imagine that in a hundred years. No, as a Texan, I can't even fucking imagine that. I can't imagine Greg Abbott wheeling his way through the fucking like you know rubble. Bro, his I, wheelchair will get fucking stuck on some shit. And I, Ted fucking Cruz left to go to Cancun. To, <laughs> I was literally about to bring that up. I hate getting po- political, but Ted Cruz abandoned Texas because of some fucking snow. Like Jesus. Yeah, he's a fucking pussy. Like, yeah. fuck Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz, I love how people from Texas always say, oh, we're good old Texas boy. And they have this, like, moniker of, like, Texans being tough. And then we hire some dipshit, like, or people vote for some fucking scumbag, like, you know, Ted Cruz. And Ted Cruz is supposed to be like, I'm a Texan man. When, number one, Ted Rafael Cruz was born in fucking Canada, right? Oh, so shit. he was, yeah. And so, uh, you know, the same kind of people who were like, oh, Obama shouldn't be run because Obama's from Kenya and who knows? And I'm like, okay, well, Ted Cruz can't run for president either because he was born in fucking Canada. I'm pretty sure that the Constitution says you have to be born in the United States to run for president. Mm. You know, no exceptions, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Come at me, originalist constitutionalist. You're fucking stupid. Speaking and... of speaking of come at me, I want to talk about the great like so when we speak of memes, like meme, you know, when you think of a meme, you think of like a funny image on Twitter, but meme historically is just like a reference with one of the first memes being Kilroy was here. You want to give a little like explanation of Kilroy? Yeah, so Kilroy is just the um... This meme that was started in World War II when German soldiers started noticing that there was this um, thing that was popping up and scribbled as graffiti along the walls that said Kilroy was here. And it is this little guy that's looking over a wall, right, with a big nose. His big and nose is hanging over the so, wall, yeah. <laughs> you know, German, uh, the German uh, Stotz, uh, Stotz uh started um, looking into it and seeing, like, if this is like behind enemy lines if this is a you know an intelligence group right or if this is an underground thing nope it's just a bunch of soldiers shit posting mm-hmm. literally just like scribbling you know uh bathroom stall like humor onto the walls and the germans thought it was like actually a fucking like intelligence signal or moniker or some kind of shit like mm-hmm. that right and so and now we got the great ukrainian meme um, I'll say it. You can correct me if I say it wrong. But the Ruski Voyanir Koralbid Idi Anakwa. Inakwi? Inakwi. Yeah. So, what happened? Go ahead and explain that story. Yeah. Yeah, there was this island, Snake Island, that apparently is a very strategic um, ba- um, battle point in the Black Sea or the Dead Sea. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, the guy, dude, Dead Sea's in Israel. Okay. Yeah, I'm bad. Yeah. In the Black Sea. <laughs> And um, basically, there were 13 people on it when a Russian warship rolled up over the radio, said, this is a Russian warship. You can either surrender or you will die. It was a straight ultimatum. It was either surrender or die. 13 people Mm -hmm. on one single island and a big-ass Russian warship. The last words of, um, of the Ukrainian men and women on the on the island was, how do I turn this up? <clears throat> Russian warship, <laughs> go fuck yourself. Yeah, dude, the transcript is so great to see. Just the like the part where like amazing. the guy, the guy's looking at his, uh, the guy's looking at his friend, or like just a pair. You could feel like you can see it in your head. You just like, should I tell him to go fuck himself, just in case? Okay, yeah. Then turns up volume. 
go fuck yourself. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I lo- <laughs> it, it's become it's become the international war cry of the Ukrainians. Everybody who's in support is um, Idionakwa to the point where they have we all know the classic "Don't tread on me" flag. And now they have one where the snake is looking to the left instead of the right. Um, yeah. And the colors are blue and yellow, Ukrainian's colors. And the text says, Idionakwa, which just means fuck off. Idionakwe. Idionakwe. My bad. Nahwe. Nahwe. Yeah. It's because then you say Idionakwa, it's like you're sounding like you're trying to say it like, you know, like his like Spanish. So. <laughs> That's probably what I'm trying to do. <laughs> but yeah. you know what? What, what a fucking... What what a meme. Like, what a way for them to solidify their pride as Ukrainians than 13 people defenseless on an island telling a warship to go fuck itself. Yeah. Like, what, um, what indomitable spirit. You know, I find it weird that they called it Snake Island because do you know what the name of the island was before they renamed it to Snake Island? I don't. What is it? Uh, Achilles Island. <laughs> You know, huh. just like, OK, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> uh, still, I mean, hey, there you go. Right. So, um, yeah, uh, payment services. Right. So we've talked about Swift, um, but Apple Pay and Google Pay are apparently no longer available <laughs> to Russian banks. Right. All right. Perfect. So, <laughs> yeah. Everybody's pitching in one way or another. <laughs> I mean, it's still, it's still like um uh, it's just it it's one of the just weirdest things, right? So the stock market and all the financial institutions, they're just kind of like, okay, we can tolerate China committing literal genocide with the Uyghurs, but we cannot stand, you know, Russia invading the Ukraine. And they're just everyone's reacting. It's it's weird to see this kind of unity. Dude, is this what the Cold War must have felt like? <laughs> Maybe this, this, I don't know, because the Cold War is all about not doing anything, isn't it? Um, no, really. I mean, it's a lot of it is just like this unifying patriotism or like this unifying kind of thing of fuck this one specific group in particular. Right. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, dude. Like, it's it's so weird because what is it? Uh, YouTube today barred Russian state-owned media outlet Russia Today and other Russian channels from actually receiving money for advertisements. Good. Yeah. And the and they, uh... the only the only like entity I heard that and maybe this has been changed because like you said news is coming out by the hour like mm-hmm. every hour you can have like 20 minutes of reading. But Eurovision is still allowing Russia to compete in its song contest, correct? No, it's not. Okay, they finally banned them. Yeah, they banned them. Okay, took a minute. <laughs> yeah, Eurovision banned them. <laughs> what is it? The World Cup qualifiers are no longer in Russia. Like, uh, F1 racing is no longer going to allow Russian cups. Like, they're, they're just basically like, yeah, fuck you. Um, I think Russia's cre- or like credit rating has gone now down to like rubbish rating, if I remember correctly. So also wait, Russia has a credit. Yeah, every uh, every country has a credit rating, right? So yeah, there's an international group that is um, around, and it gives like credit uh, ratings to uh, countries. And so one of the things that I saw, if I remember correctly, Russia credit rating is that. Um, the ratings right now are currently like S and P. So S and P is this, uh, rating kind of thing, right? So the S and P, uh, cuts Russia's rating to junk. So there's like, apparently this like thing of how to rate a country's like credit worthiness, right? Cause this is like one of the way- ways that banks, give loans to other countries, right? For like different kinds of shit. So, um, yeah, I I didn't know that countries had a a rate. They got credit scores just like us. (laughs) Yeah. So they have like countries have credit scores too. Right. So, um, 
Yeah, apparently, what is it? Russia, uh, the invasion of the Ukraine, basically realigned credit ratings. Uh, for, so the S&P lowered Russia's credit rating to junk status. And Moody's, which is another financial institution used by that, downgraded it um, also to a warning of junk like essentially wait so junk um, is a real thing you're not just using that to like be funny no junk is no, the no, no, rating? no i'm actually saying that that's the rating right now that they're that they're you know well damn <laughs> i thought you yeah. were just like being funny like it's trash it's 112 so russia now has an investment grade rating uh from moody's and an equivalent of a uh triple b negative from fitch which is another london-based uh financial institution uh, due to one of the lowest debt levels in the world at just 20% of the GDP. Um, and it is, you know, essentially a sub-investment grade category that they call junk. Well, so, God damn. Speaking, yeah. of, uh, speaking of junk, it seems like not even Russian citizens want this evasion. Um, in the Moscow protest, over 2,700 Russian citizens were arrested. Like, mm -hmm. can you imagine that? 27, 2,700 Russian citizens are against, um, are against this and were arrested showing their opposition to this. Mm hmm it, Yeah. Wow. And it's just, yeah, because, um, the, the history of Russian, like, stuff doesn't usually end well for people who try to be politically the opposite of Putin. So. No. No. And the fact that there are still people into, like, two to three days of, like, protesting despite government crackdowns is fucking insane. I was watching a Vice program on Ukraine, and one of the Ukrainian or one of the Vice people who was just, like, there giving interviews and filming, the police arrested him and actually put him in a van, right? And they're like, no, no, this guy's the press. This guy's the press, right? Like, you know. He's not participating. He's just, you know, here reporting Jeez. and they yeah. arrested him. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, damn. And they had it on like camera. So it's 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 insane. It really is. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I didn't even think about that because didn't wasn't Stalin like one of the first people to like Photoshop people out of photos. He was so paranoid. Yeah. He did that. Uh, there's this uh, famous picture where he's standing next to a Russian general next to the, uh, like, uh, I think it's Dnieper. I'm not sure. But uh, <laughs> this guy uh, was essentially, <laughs> sorry, one minute. No worries. I get yeah, the sniffles sorry. too. Mm. No, just uh, this guy, uh, this Russian guy, essentially... Um, I'm trying to remember what, what it is, right? So, um, I should remember this. Um, I'm going to look it up real quick because I remember, uh, the Photoshop thing, right? Mm -hmm. Just, I present this in class and I should, but I guess it's been a long time, right? Mm -hmm. So it's one of his just like purges. Um, so during each purge, right? Stalin would actually get rid of people that he believed were, um, like a danger to him and to the party. And so there was a po photo where Stalin is standing next to this guy named Nikolai Yezhov, right? And Yezhov was a general who was really good at his job, like actually, uh, was worth his salt, right? He was, he was doing pretty good. Well, during his purge, um, Stalin censors removed Yezhov from the photographic record, cutting him from the photograph in which he smiled next to his former boss, Stalin. Um, the photo retouchers removed Yezhov from the photo and inserted a new water to cover up the space where Yezhov would have been standing. So, a, a new water? Yeah, like a new water. Like, they essentially put a strip of, like, water from... Um, like the part and then just enlarged it and then place it over him. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. So but. it's just weird, right? Cause Yezhov fell from Stalin's favor. Um, just essentially 
He was denounced, secretly accused, tied or tried in a secret court, and then executed. Right. So, still, um, it's it's weird because Nikolai Yezhov um, was a secret police official who oversaw many of the other purges that Stalin did, and was an adamant <laughs> Stalin supporter. What was that? He was uh... even nicknamed. He was even nicknamed Stalin's right hand. Right. So. Dark Nikolai the Wise. He yeah, could purge he, others, but not stop himself from being purged. I just can't. I can't. It's the dude. This Russian history is so fucking fascinating. It's so fucking brutal. Like, if you ever want like a just a Game of Thronesy kind of like you know history, it's like Russian history is so confusing and intertwining. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually had the opportunity to read in my graduate course um, this book by uh, Dominic Lievin called uh the end of czarist russia that explained like the fall of the czar essentially and the political background game that was going on and a bunch of other kind of fucking shit it was just fascinating because i was like who is this person they're like oh yeah in the book they'd be like oh yeah and then the new communications director i'm like who the fuck is that when did he ever come in and it's like it's the th- it's the final act of the movie like, the czar is about to be overthrown why is this guy important? Why did <laughs> bad so, writing? Bad writing. No, it's not bad writing. It's just chaotic. It's just <laughs> fucking. It's just fucking chaotic, dude. Now but, you gotta watch the um, sequel. My favorite thing that came out of the U.S. State Department this this week, right? Because there's not a lot of it because it's the U.S. State Department was when Vladimir Putin told um, basically that like Russia or that the Ukraine was just going to be part of Russia again. The U.S. State Department released this meme where it shows different uh, churches being built in Kiev. And there's, like, uh, they have two things. They have one that has, like, the pictures showing these different ancient churches from Kiev made in, like, the 9th and 10th century. And then you just see uh, uh, labeled Kiev. And then on the bottom, it's labeled Moscow. And it's just pictures of fucking forest when all these churches like are just kind of like comparison shots. So, <laughs> you know, you're just like, Hey, Moscow didn't exist. Moscow didn't exist here either. Kiev is older than Russia. And I'm like, yeah, Kiev is older than Russia. So <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Just, just, just history check plus ratio plus factually <laughs> plus incorrect. Church, plus Christianity. It's just, <laughs> oh, God damn. And, mm-hmm. um, on, on the bright, on the lighter side of this, Fortunately, it seems like there will be a massive loss of life, but it seems like Russia will not be getting what it wants in the end, considering how nobody is supporting Russia right now. So, yeah. like, my question is, um, like, from a historian, historian standpoint, what's going to happen to Putin after this? Like, I, well, I, can't, I can't see him winning this and walking away like, whoop, sorry about that. Anyways, um... It's Tuesday, so who wants to go bowling? Mm, I don't know, man. Like, uh, this is one of those things of I can't really predict the future, right? I get so that. <laughs> yeah. I, I really can't. Uh, a historian's job is not to predict the future. It's only to tell you situations that happened in the past. Um, I can say that when someone in Russia fucks up like this, there are usually either two responses. Either a massive crackdown... Um, and use of military to pacify civilians or a legitimate overthrow of the Russian uh, monarch or like politician that they're talking about. And um, I, I don't know, dude, like it's, it's either Putin's going to have to pacify a large amount of civilians with like military force or Putin is going to not be president for very much longer. If this, if this goes in, um, Mm -hmm. and I'm not, I'm not exactly sure because the whole thing with the czar kind of started when the czar was like fucked up, like world war one. And what happened then is that the czar essentially, um, did not help supply troops. Russia was in a really bad spot. People were fucking dying in train stations because they didn't have enough, trucks or troop transport to get, you know, wounded and hurt soldiers to hospitals. So food was also being really scarce. 
Um, but yeah, like there was a revolt or there was a citywide revolt in Petrograd, which is, you know, doesn't really exist anymore. But as soon as that started, um, it grew and got bigger. And then Russian, the Russian czar, czar Nicholas II, was like, hey, fuck these people. I'm going to use the military to crack down on them. And so guess what happened? The military decided to decline and instead join the protests. And he kept sending militaries to try and go kill other people. And it just didn't work. And he, you know, essentially lost all of it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Jeez. Yeah. It's fucking like weird. So I don't know. I don't think that this is, uh, it's, it's just, I can't, I can't tell you what's going to happen because this is just going to be one of those situations in which it is, um, it, we just have to see, right? We'll just have to wait and see. I don't think it's going to end well for Putin, but also then again, I didn't think that it was going to end well for like anyone else because... I don't know, dude, like there's some real disgusting shit going on in American media right now where um, what is it? The right wing was essentially saying like Fox News was going on about how Russia was not going to invade the Ukraine and the left was trying to make it, you know, whatever. And then when Russia invaded Fox News and right wing shitheads started saying this would never happen under Trump. And it's Biden's fault that this happened. Uh, so I honestly can't even like begin to bring myself to care about shit like that anymore. Like right. all these problems just seem so small to me. Like, <laughs> like it's it's what it's what you said earlier. We had a whole episode planned today, and like none of it is significant to me anymore. Like none of it yeah. fucking matters, and it's it's God. I just don't know what to say. I know. Yeah, dude, it's, it's, I, I have been unfortunate to be born a millennial, which I guess is a, is kind of a weird thing to say, but, um, the unfortunate aspect of being a millennial is that my generation essentially got to live through two economic disasters. We got to live through nine 11. Then we got to live through, you know, the George W. Bush years and then um, we lived through Trump, and now we're experiencing COVID, and then we're experiencing this. So, like, it's, 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 this is, I think this is your first actual, like, major world conflict, is it? Well, yeah, and I also don't believe, like, <laughs> like, Trump being elected is nearly as bad as this. Are you sure? 100%. <laughs> You re you really think so? Absolutely, absolutely. This is that's like <laughs> you don't think that Trump being elected was was something that really led to this being a, a situation. You know that uh, Trump sure. was impeached because he tried to he tried to extort information from Joe Biden by the Ukrainians. I'm I'm not sure. I just to me it could I don't know. Like yeah. Because I'm not thinking about that. I'm not. I'm just thinking about not, everybody well, in the no. Ukraine who's like fighting right now. I just can't get my mind off of it. Like you how fortunate, okay. how for how fortunate I am that I just wasn't born a Ukrainian citizen. That's it. You know. <laughs> yeah. Like that's um, it's it's so wild that this could have happened to anyone, and it just happened to. I, I don't know, man. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of broken. <laughs> You're kind of bro you're kind of broken though I can tell Jesus dude like, like that's I, like like I said the only reason this isn't happening to me is because I wasn't born in the Ukraine right Yeah it's just fuck it puts everything into perspective Isn't that kind of does that kind of make it like really weird then that like a lot of privileges are just basically genetic lottery not even genetic this was well, I guess no, this technically is like, genetic. It's just a, yeah, genetic lottery, right? Yeah, because you like know. I was born to I was born to Mexican parents, and boom, I I skipped out on all that. Like, yeah. no, yeah, you're absolutely right. Location lottery. Yeah, it's like a it's like a cosmic lottery that no one really has control over, right? Yeah. So who, who knows? I could have been. 
yeah, now, like, everything that has been going on is, like, put in perspective now. Because, like, I've all like, my entire life, it's like, eat up, there are kids starving in Africa. But, like, I've never had that moment of realization until right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, dude. Everything, like it's, feels, it's, uh... everything feels fucking different. <laughs> I don't know. It does, doesn't it? Like, it's... That's a that's an interesting kind of thing to think about, isn't it? Is that you you are experiencing uh, self actualization, right? And I think you're experiencing a little bit of like cosmic horror right now. Yeah, probably. Like, if you, like I said earlier, I'm fucking talking into a microphone right now. Instead, I <laughs> Jesus. Instead of talking into a microphone on Snake Island. Exactly. So it's like holy yeah. shit, and it, and it's all just luck. Like I'm not here for any specific reason. I could have been in the Ukraine. Who knows? It's just God. Yeah. I don't know. I know. I was just, this is nerd hell. We're literally having uh, I'm, divine I'm, punishment. I'm, I'm <laughs> having a I'm having a mental breakdown on the mic. <laughs> well, no. I think it's it's good to talk through this kind of shit, right? It's so just, it's just insane. Like we were making Shaq memes a couple of week ago, weeks ago. Yeah, like <laughs> and like this didn't happen till Wednesday. Yeah, like I was I was playing Dungeons and Dragons when this shit was going on. I was playing Persona Five. Holy mm-hmm. shit! I know, right? So, um, I think one of the things that you need to, because if you know, I am older than you, and I've kind of lived through world shattering events throughout all the time and each one seems unrealistic right the one thing that i can tell you though is that like you really can't control what other people do the only thing that you can control is how you react to the situation yeah and you know i really don't take my advice that often (laughs) and um but it's also I'm, i'm kind of like i was born in the lucky genetic lottery right but also that lucky genetic lottery was kind of like the base level ticket for me. So uh, like, you know, physically speaking, cause mm-hmm. my brain's all fucked up and can't produce serotonin. So, <laughs> um, it's, um, I, for me, one of the biggest events, right. Was nine 11, right. Yeah. Cause I was, I was in elementary school at the time, but I was at the stage of my cognition to where I could recognize that people died, but I only thought it was something that old people went through, right? And then when mm. I um, got, and then when I saw, you know, nine eleven when that shit happened, that was the moment that kind of broke it for me. That oh shit, death can happen to anyone, <laughs> right? Because mm. we watched the we watched the towers collapse on television, and I was a fucking kid, and I remember. Um, what is it? My, um, my grandparents essentially saying like, you're going to watch this and you're going to watch all of it. Right. And I was like, okay, great. I can't play Pokemon. Right. What the fuck dude? Like just (laughs) there. And so, yeah, it was, it was a big crisis for me. I think it's something that you're going through right now too, is, is essentially this thing of you're recognizing that, while you may not be the most privileged in the United States, you still have privilege that far exceeds people from other countries. Yeah, man. And, and all it took yeah. was one fucking insane world leader. Well, yeah. Like, it's, it's, that's why people are, that's why people need to be political. And that's why people need to be actively aware of what happens politically. Robinson yeah because you know if you don't then people will abuse the system and turn it into this Putin-esque like state right because you know we've made fun of like China right and we've made fun of like Putin but there were people who decided not to pay attention politically um and guess what happened, right? (laughs) They just essentially turned to shit. And the United States was so close to that having a thing too. Uh, January 6th was a really big deal, right? And January 6th was a really big thing for the United States. Like Robinson, the Civil War um, 
like Washington DC is like within a hundred miles of Richmond, Virginia, the capital or one of the capitals, uh, the biggest cities of the Confederacy and the Confederate flag never actually got into Washington DC, right? The Confederate official Confederate flag never got into Washington DC, but on January 6th, some shithead broke into the Capitol and touted a Confederate flag through the halls, right? And there were people there that were legitimately upset and willing to overthrow a democratically, you know, um, a democratic election just so that Cheeto Jesus could get, you know, back in power. And that could have had disastrous effects for us. A lot, like a, a huge, a huge disaster. It could have been a huge thing, right? That's, th- that is one of those things of why I think it's important to be at least aware of politics. And I think it'd be aware politically of what we're doing or what you want as a society. Cause you, you are obviously someone who doesn't um, hold a lot of hate in their heart. I mean, I guess right now, I guess you could say you hate Putin. But, <laughs> I want to even, you know, I want to even say it like that. It's just mostly disbelief because yeah. it's like, well, I, th- I mean, you're going through the stages of grief. I think, right? Yeah, now. <laughs> probably. And I'm not even there. Like that's the part that I hate the most is that. I'm just watching on the sidelines and I'm like, oh, I'm sad because I have to know about this. It's like, fuck me. Like, geez. Uh huh. I don't even have but, it a quarter as bad. But one of my biggest points that I really need to say to you is this, you know, if you want to prevent a Putin-esque type of government from being established within the United States, then people need to... Be aware politically and be more active politically. You gotta then, pay more attention to what's going on. Yeah, and I think that's um, one of those things of um, I was in Germany and I was at school, right? And there was this girl there who was from Estonia. And she one time, I think we got into an argument because she was talking about how it was dumb that German had gendered nouns and that it was really sexist that, you know, doctor was masculine and teacher was feminine. <laughs> and I was essentially arguing with her um, wait, about like, wait till she gets to language. Mexico. I know. Right. It was just for me. It was just like, yo, dude, like it's language. Just chill out. Just learn the language. Right. You don't have to make everything like this. And, you know, she started talking politics and I was like, OK, well, I don't fucking care. And she goes, you don't care about politics? And I was like, no, I don't care about politics. And she goes, well, doesn't that show you some kind of privilege that you have to not care about politics? That you, growing up from the United States, that the world basically caters to you, that you don't have to worry about other people? And it kind of put me in my place a bit, right? Because that's... That is true. It kind of woke me up to like this whole idea, or not woke me up because that's what QAnon dipshits say, but... um. It, it really, I guess I had this realization of, oh shit, right? People who usually say that I don't care about politics or I don't participate in politics are really privileged, right? They're not worried about, like, shit that's going to happen to them, specifically. It's, like, almost a little bit of, like, a selfishness, in a sense. So, I don't know. So, <laughs> Lenny, I don't know if she listens to this, because she probably doesn't. <laughs> she's probably in Ukraine right now. Who the fuck knows? Jesus. She probably like, <laughs> hope she's safe. Yeah, but well, I mean, she's from Estonia, right? So it's it's not really a thing, but still, um, yeah, it's you just need to mo- be more active. You need to be more mindful of this shit, right? Cause... Whoop, whoop! Oh no! Wait a minute. There we go. Eh, sorry about that. Uh, something happened. Might have been technical difficulties. I might have started crying because of this awful revelation. Uh, Stanley might have finally gone to Hulk mode and just ravaged a local village. But um, sorry about that. We lost the rest of um, the podcast, but we, we got a good amount of time on there. So we hope you enjoy, and um, our hearts go out to everybody in the Ukraine. Y'all have a wonderful night now.